Hello and welcome everyone. Today's video is about a recent match I had. And as every great match, this one as well starts with a teammate leaving before the game has started, leaving me pretty much alone on this end of the map. Upon realizing that I am frontline and alone, I make the decision to build a stone cutter in preparation to advance to Western Europe, as that faction is my preferred choice when playing frontline, so that I can mainly focus on a defensive playstyle. In order to make defending easier, I cut off the enemy's access to my base on one side, so I can concentrate my defensive efforts on the side that is still open. Just as I am about to gain some ground by building towers in front of my enemy's base, he sends out his army of archers and spearmen to contest the area. Fortunately, my workers finish a tower construction in time and my army prevails. allowing me to build siege workshops right at the front, which means the end of my enemy should be certain at this point. My teammate however has another idea. He sends his entire Light Knight army into battle and before my first Onagar sees the light of the world, we storm the enemy base to end him for good. Instead of wasting the firepower of my longbows on houses and towers, I decide to combat any incoming reinforcements of the enemies before they can hinder my allies from destroying this player. Although my army had to pay the price, the first enemy is taken care of and my first onagers have made it to the front line, threatening to end the next player who is now under a lot of pressure. If you paid attention here, you will realize that I just made a crucial mistake. Had I left my honor just shooting, the enemy could not have repaired his town hall. Just one shot was missing from this player meeting his end. But now his ally is sending reinforcements as well and my advance fails due to a lack of archers supporting my onagers. Because the industrial era is still a bit away, I raise another army with onagers and cannons for one final approach before I would start recruiting Berthas and rangers to deal with these guys. Well, the enemies have not been idling and raised their own army in the meantime.
Luckily, my teammate has spent all this time to raise another army of Light Knights and comes in to clear our side from enemies. After almost 50 minutes into the game, our enemies pop a wonder. Realizing that there is a sea in between them and me now, I prepare airfields and a vision tower to start air raids on their base and thin out their defensive capabilities. Shortly after, my first bombing raid arrives and turns their efforts around from spamming T-34 tanks to building anti-air and squadron cannons in the future, as he realizes the threat that is coming down on him from the air and from the sea. With my next bombing raids, I specifically target his anti-air cannons to increase the pressure of my bombers for future bombing runs. The anti-air tachankas are not a high priority for my bombers here, although they are more dangerous to my bombers. That is because on the on one side, the Tachankas can escape my bombing attacks, and on the other side, they take up the enemy's population space, which is why letting them live at this point is more beneficial in the long run. Now that we have our vision tower constructed, the moment has finally come for us to make use of Germany's incredibly underwhelming Cannon Colossal. This building costs a horrendous amount of resources, has the ridiculous requirement of owning 3 arsenals and deals only 300 damage per shot every 15 seconds with a terrible accuracy rating. So why am I building this? At this point, I do have the resources for it, I do have control over the land in range and this thing does have the range to harass the enemy from a safe distance. So this is one of the rare situations when it does actually make sense to build it. Will it destroy the enemy's town hall? No, but it will increase the pressure on the enemy and it has a chance of damaging or even destroying some of the anti-air cannons around it, while forcing the enemy to always have a few workers repairing. To distract the enemy and to maximize the effect of my bombers, it is important to keep up bombing raids as often as possible. Here we have a great opportunity to temporarily reduce the enemy's population space by destroying his houses, which creates space we can use later on when landing with Bertas or tanks. The enemies attempt to land their own troops on our territory to build factories in our front yard, but my bombers stand ready again to send the enemy home. Once my bombers have recovered and resupplied, I send another envoy with the dearest greetings to my enemy's base, ready to destroy whatever might challenge my incoming naval raid. As my battleships arrive in the landing zone to flatten the enemy's air defense towers, more squadron cannons are fighting back, so that I give my remaining bombers the orders to execute one more bombing run before the enemy's tachankas will take them out. 
After successfully preventing another landing of my enemies, I transport my own workers to the island south of their wonder to prepare a sneaky bomber balloon raid, which in my eyes might be successful here, considering my enemy has not really spent the resources on air defense structures that I would have spent, and his anti-air cannons at the beach have already been destroyed by my battleships. At the same time, I land my Bertas for a quick attempt on taking out their wonder. My Bertas got obliterated by the enemy's Katyusha rockets, so I quickly fly in another bomber squadron, since they have the range to destroy my docks, airfields and factories across the water. But time is slowly running out on us. My team has so far been dealing with staying alive and keeping the enemy away. I've only one final ace up my sleeve to turn this thing around, and that is my bomber balloon spam. The last times I checked, the enemy's air defenses were directed towards my previous base, so a sneaky attack from behind should avoid most of these air defenses and allow my balloons for enough time to take out the enemy's wonder. In preparation, I send in a battleship and land another load of Bertas to distract the enemy and reinforce their belief to build up squadron cannons, Beatas and Katushas. After my Bertas have landed, I am sending in my 20 bomber balloons that should now have a decent chance to bypass their anti-air units and buildings and take out the enemy wonder. Okay, I didn't get to execute my plan anymore thanks to a fortunate destruction through my allies and the fact that it took just one more shot from my Berta to land when I had exactly one Berta left and that was ready to fire. What a unique moment this was, I wish I could have shown you this from a better camera perspective, however the replay file was damaged and well, I think it's still good enough and I hope you enjoyed. For all those lucky viewers of you who have been watching to this point, I have another little giveaway today. You can win one out of two codes for unlocking the Lanky Jack statue Halloween cosmetic. This allows you to place a little spooky statue on the battlefield that does not affect the battle but might indeed scare your opponents into surrendering. To participate in this giveaway, it is required to submit a comment with whatever you want to comment, but also a functioning Discord tag. Usually I only ask people to add their Discord tag, but this time it is a requirement. And if you don't add it to your comment, you cannot win. The winner will be drawn in around 24 hours after uploading my video to YouTube to make sure that whoever wins can spook up the battlefields during Halloween. So that is it for today, thank you everybody for watching and see you in the next one.